Hello, this is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here to talk to you about Brig Fair by Frederick Delius. Now, this is a piece more often spoken of than listened to. It's supposed to be one of Delius's most famous orchestral works and most popular, but you'll probably look far and wide to see it played frequently, at least outside of the UK. Delius, of course, is best known as one of our most famous composers to have died of syphilis. Now, this is not quite as unusual as you might think. It happened to Scott Joplin, it happened to Smetna, and it happened to Delius. And the difference is that Delius, although he went blind, survived to dictate a lot of his late music to Eric Fenby, whose great claim to fame is that he was Delius's amenuensis, and he is the only reason I have ever seen that anybody ever uses the word amenuensis, if that's the right word in the way you pronounce it. But that's what Eric Fenby was, an amenuensis. In other words, a guy who acted as Delius's hands to copy down his music when he was blind and couldn't do it himself. And, of course, he continued to write magnificent music. Now, Brig Fair is subtitled an English Rhapsody. But what it really is, is a set of variations, free variations, of course, because everything Delius did was free, um, on an English folk song. And just so you know what it sounds like, because it begins with a dreamy, poetic introduction for winds with harp diddling around, and it's all, it's all very beautiful. It lasts almost two minutes before you actually get to the tune. And here is the tune. So I'm just, as a public service, you will know the tune. Now, as you can hear, it's played by an English horn or an oboe. That's an oboe, right? And then next by a flute and then by the strings. And then we're off to the races, except nothing by Delius ever really races. Delius, as you know, is best known for his incredibly dreamy, fluid, somewhat rhythmless, uh, endless stream of proto mellow Wagnerian sort of melody with chromatic harmony. It's very, very beautiful, but it's sort of hard to keep together and hard to shape in a way that's going to be convincing because it can sort of just die. I mean, it's just a puddle of melody that sits there and dies. So let's talk about some recordings of Brig Fair. One of the most famous ones was this one by John Barbaroli. Now, Barbaroli is sort of the Celebidaki of Bridge Fair, Brig Fair people because his performance lasts more than 18 minutes, and that is probably the slowest on disc. I mean, it's really, really extended. I happen to think it's just a bit dull. I know it's heretical to say that, but I, I mean, you know, there's a limit to how much meandering loveliness you can take, and I think Barbaroli sort of crosses over the line. Next, we have this disc. This was Richard Hickox with the Bournemouth Symphony. Uh, he's He times in at about 16 minutes, and I have to say, as has come up, I don't regard timings as dispositive. It's a, it's a useful way to judge performances once you've heard many of them, and you get a sense of what the parameters of uh, an, an acceptable or at least an effective performance ought to be. And 15, 16 minutes is pretty good for Brig Fair. 18, like Barbaroli, is a bit much. The nice thing about this disc is that you get Paris, the Song of a Great City, which is gorgeous, a fabulous tone poem, and the Florida Suite, which is lots of fun. If you can find this disc still, this is an archive music, by the way, issue, a, a, re, a retool, a reprint, and it sounds just fine. Next. Vernon Handley. Now, Vernon Handley, of course, was an English music specialist, an expert. And this disc includes A Song of Summer and In a Summer Garden and Brig Fair, of course, lasting about 16 and a half minutes, which is reasonable. And Eventier, subtitled Once Upon a Time. Now, Eventier is incredibly fun. It's supposed to be based on some sort of like 
Norse myth thing with, you know, goblins and leprechauns and sprites and mysterious goings on. And at the climax of it, the orchestra actually has to yell. They go, hey, it's, you know, it's supposed to mean something. And it's just wonderful. Another really fine performance of Brig Fair is this one with Sir Charles McCarris with the Orchestra of the Welsh National Opera. Now, you know, when you come to think about it, there really are no bad performances of Brig Fair because people who play Delius and record it for sure have to be committed to the cause. You know, they're, they either they either do it well and they know it or they don't bother. Even Barbaroli, who sort of trudges along. I mean, he obviously loves the music. I mean, when Barbaroli trudges, he's always trudging out of love. Let's be clear. He's a love trudger. But, you know, the people who conduct Delius, the Delians, if you want to call them that, they really feel committed to the music. And so the performances are almost always good. It's just a question of your own personal taste, whether or not you think that it's too sort of fluid and flaccid or flaccid or whatever that word is and, and shapeless or whether it, it needs to have a little bit more energy and rhythm and firmness. Now, for energy and rhythm and firmness, one of your best bets will always be Charles McCarris. Like I said, he really knows how to play music and give it shape. His performances always have that sort of underlying rhythm and pulse and a vitality. Even Delius, who was not known for having a pulse, it really does have uh, a beautiful, beautiful arc and shape to the entire piece. And the playing is wonderful. And the, this was one of those Argo recordings. Remember when Argo meant something and they were doing like an English music series and McCarris was doing a lot of them. He did the Elgar symphonies. They were fabulous. Then it all just disappeared when, you know, the record industry went to hell and blew up. And so some of it gets reissued and some of it doesn't. If you can find McCarris on Argo doing Delius, these two discs, they're absolutely wonderful. Another lovely disc, and the source of that beautiful excerpt I played for you at the beginning, is on Naxos with the New Zealand Symphony and Meyer Fredman. Now, Meyer Fredman, you may recall, was a conductor who appeared on those wonderful, wonderful Lyrita discs of like the Bach's Second Symphony that really still hasn't been equaled, things like that. And he knows this music and conducts it beautifully. This disc actually is one of my favorite Delius discs because you get Paris, which is, like I said, a fabulous tone poem. Brig Fair, Eventier, so you can hear them all go, hey, you know, which is so much fun. The Ermelin Prelude and La Kalinda. La Kalinda is the dance that Delius sort of stuffed in everywhere he needed something with rhythm. Originally, it was a single piece, but it, well, originally it started out, I think, in the Florida Suite, and then it became La Kalinda and was inserted into the opera Coanga, and it's like, you could just hear Delius like, oh, gee, I need to do something that's quicker. And so let's use La Calinda. And that's where it shows up. But here you get it all by itself and it's lovely. Now, of course, the ultimate Delius conductor was Thomas Beecham. He loved Delius. He edited Delius for publication, sometimes in ways that Delius probably never even imagined. And he always gave persuasive performances of Delius's music. I mean, he's always your best bet. And he lived long enough happily to make some stereo recordings and including, you know, the Florida Suite and let's see what's on here, the Dance Rhapsody number two and the Song Before Sunrise. And oh, it's just all kinds of little things, including Brig Fair, one of his greatest Delius performances. It's beautiful. The Royal Philharmonic plays beautifully. It's Beecham. It just has a certain magnetism, even though the tempo is not that slow, but it's, it's yeah, oh no, he's less than 16 minutes. See, we're speeding up. 15 minutes, 51 seconds. It's starting to get livelier. Beecham was a lively conductor generally. And one of the things that makes his Delius so persuasive is that it moves. He understands the need to make the music move. And we come to a favorite. This is my favorite. It's going to be controversial. I know it's going to be controversial, but this is, to me is one of the greatest records ever made by anybody. Ormandy and Philadelphia. Can you believe it? First of all, he takes less than 15 minutes, which is only a good thing. Second of all, the recording is gorgeous, sonically gorgeous. The playing is 
absolutely unequaled in this work. No one has ever played it more beautifully. And in Delius, you know, no one's listening to Delius for the contrapuntal mastery. It's all color and texture, and that's the point. And Ormandy, the great colorist with the Philadelphia Orchestra at its peak, I mean, come on, really. I mean, who, who else would you rather listen to? And it's so fluid and shapely and smartly played. And he also does, he, he does a dan the Dance Rhapsody number two on hearing the f first cuckoo in spring in a summer garden. And you also get on this disc, um, one of the ultimate, one of the two or three very, very greatest recordings of the Vaughan Williams Talis Fantasia and the Fantasia on green sleeves, as well as the Lark Ascending with Lois Lane and the Cleveland Sinfonietta with Raphael Drurian, Drurian uh, playing the violin solo. So, you know, it's a wonderful disc. If you can still find it, I would snatch it up in a heartbeat. Nobody cared ever about Ormandy's Delius. And so you have to wonder, he knew nobody would care about his Delius or his Von Williams for that matter, but he made them and he made them superlatively. And the only possible reason could have been because he felt something for the music and knew that it was going to be just the thing for his own predilections and those of that magnificent orchestra. So I know you're going to say, well, Hurwitz, he's an American and he likes an American orchestra. And it's like, bullshit. I like the best sound with the best orchestras and the best performance. I don't care where they're from. I really don't. It makes no difference to me whatsoever. I'm not wedded to any of these people. I just want to hear the best and listen to this Brig Fair, compare it to all the ones I've just listed, however, however good they are. All the ones we just talked about, some of them are magnificent. I'm not taking a thing away from them, but you will not hear better than Ormandy and Philly in Delius's Brig Fair. Prove me wrong, but keep on listening. Thank you. <laughs>